So I'm back. I like the way I shaved. I ended up going to 24 Hour Fitness today after dealing with this. So I can go to the sauna and steam room, hit the jets, you know what I'm saying? This is part two of the whole cop raiding my tent shenanigans. The recent tent raid. So obviously, as you can see, I put my tent back and I put a bunch of <laughs> shit on top of it. <laughs> so they didn't take the food. I left them, I don't know if you've seen it in the first one. Um, here's a picture of it. And it was just like a bag sitting in the middle of the where the tent used to be. And uh, I left it there as like a food donation. So they had stopped by and they were like, what's in here? It would be either left open or they would take it to put it up for donation somewhere, I don't know. Or they would take it to throw it away because it's littering this, this area. But they didn't take it at all. So I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think she was bluffing. And she might have been bluffing on purpose because some cops will play like a persona, like especially when they're in front of other cops, they'll be like, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna come back and see if, make sure if you're here or not, you know, make sure if you're gone. And they might just play that just to seem that way. But it wasn't very clear to me. It wasn't like she, you know, gave me the wink, you know? Like, wink, wink, like, you're more than welcome to come back, you know? Or, like, I don't care, wink, wink, you know what I mean? Uh, so it wasn't really clear to me. It kind of seemed serious. But nobody ever showed up. And um, it's day two now, after the raid. And because I didn't find a place last night, I could have just kept going on my bike. I know I mentioned walking in the first part but I have a bike me and Sin we she follows me it's it's a happy day but I can't I just I feel so attached to this project that I'm working on attachments man I feel like attachments to like making money and stuff like I just feel like ah oh, man I don't know because I make these sage necklaces and I want to teach people how to make them and I'm working on a PDF that's like I don't know how many pages long, basically like an ebook on how to make them. Cause I'm the only one in the world who makes them. And I want to put that out there, but I feel like doing that is just, I just feel held back. And, but I know it's a good move monetarily. So that's why I'm still here. Otherwise I'd be just on my bike, just traveling, taking the bus, taking the train, plane, whatever, you know what I mean? Like just letting, letting it go, letting it be, letting it, flow in whichever way it wants to uh, so I'll rant a little bit more here in a little bit I came back last night because I didn't have another spot I couldn't find anywhere else to go and if I wanted to go like say towards those mountains which I'm pretty sure there's plenty of spots over there nobody cares it's too far away from everything like you know what I mean like I'm close to everything here I'm just like literally like five minutes or less bike ride down to like Starbucks, to, you know what I mean? To work on my stuff. I really don't want to go anywhere else. If I'm going to leave somewhere, I'm just going to go. You know what I mean? And let the ethers take me. So I came back at night after my laundry and I set the tent back up. But this time, instead of putting everything back, like my guitar, my candles, my incense, and all of my magic stuff uh, and all of my clothes and everything I just have the tent itself and I left the mattress and the tent casing the plastic bag for the mattress when it's rolled up and that's it and there's a lighter over there but um, you know and that's that's it so if they did come by if they did come back they would just find this. Everything else is hidden. And, um, can't even close this thing. What the fuck? Probably need two hands, but I'm holding the phone with the other. Oh, there we go. Just in case they did come back. I'm not here, obviously, during the day. And I, I made sure to leave in the morning because that's when the helicopter flew over. I mean, the helicopter can fly over at any time, which is really risky to, to keep staying here. But, I made amends with the cops in my dreams because they followed me and they chased me for like a few years in my dreams. And one day, one night, 
when I was dreaming, I had made friends with the cops. And ever since then, in waking life, I've been, I've made friends with every cop. So, um, so me and the, me and the cops are cool. We're homies now. Know that there's police brutality, which fuck police brutality. Fuck pretty much most, if not all of the laws. At least we're friends. And, uh, if they come back, I'm gonna make a joke. It's gonna be lighthearted. It's not gonna be serious, you know? What's the point of being serious, you know what I mean? It just puts everybody in a serious mood and then it's just bad vibes. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not the vibes I'm about. It's gonna be like this for a few days. I'm not gonna put too much in there. I'm not gonna leave anything in there. It's just gonna be that mattress. So if that goes, then fuck it. You know what I mean? There goes 55 bucks. You know what I mean? Big whoop. I'll buy another tent. It'll be smaller. It'll be green this time, not white orange whatever it is sore thumb colors you know what I mean if I did come back to this spot I'd probably dig out underneath put that one person tent in there bada bing bada bang bada boom you know what I'm saying I'm back from 24 hour from the gym from the saw spa I went to sprouts and got some I'm obsessed with this tea here's a picture uh, lately um, delicious and makes you feel bomb, man. It makes you feel so freaking good. Like this is my drug. If I if I do drugs, it's tea. It's tea all the way, hands down. And it's specifically this tea lately. And I got a brownie. I have some bomb brownies at Sprouts. Like really bomb brownies. So that's that's the update on this whole police shenanigans. And I am gonna try to remain here, but only at night. During the day, I'm taking off, man. As soon as morning hits, I'm gone. But I pack up all my blankets and I pack up everything, so it takes me a while. But uh, worst comes to worst, man. Um, I just joke it with the cops, you know what I mean? Like, they like jokes. Cops like jokes. Who doesn't like jokes? Good to see you again. Welcome to my camp. You know, or... I know some of you are new here, and don't know what's going on and that's completely okay I'm gonna answer it in a few videos uh, because I am on a mission going from nothing to everything I want and what I want is simple but without working for the man and the reason for this is and I'll mention it more but the reason for this being is for one the system needs to change we have to get rid of it we have to change it we have to upgrade we have to evolve from this because if i get sucked into a nine to five man not only am i going to be depressed barely surviving and having that that same problem that everybody has you know i don't want that and on top of that you're feeding a war machine you're feeding a machine that doesn't really give a damn about you we've all been kind of sucked into believing as normal and we're feeding corporations lifeless corporations that only exist because of numbers flowing in currency the stock market you're feeding the stock market and that's why they want you to they want you to work that's why you can't just live off of the land that's why they make it difficult for you because if you do that other people are going to notice and want to join you and want to do the same thing but, they, but then but then the money is not circulating and that means that a lot of people are going to be left out of their riches and not a lot of people actually just a few one two percent of the population of the planet and their families have worked hard to get where they are that's one of the reasons why I refuse to work I will work under the table if there's a company out there that needs my help that wants my help hey hey man like I need some tile work done sure I've done tile before I'll do some tile work you know it's not gonna be every day you know what I mean like but like two or three days out of the week sure maybe that's why I do photography, because I don't get to tax my, my customers. My customers don't get taxed by me. I don't tax them and I, I don't get my money taxed. And I like it that way, I like to keep it that way, you know? That's why I do YouTube. That's another reason why I'm doing these videos is by the views that I'm getting doing this, it's gonna encourage you, inspire you to create something for yourself to inspire the world. And like I was telling somebody earlier, if you look at the word inspiration, I've said this many times, if you look at the word inspiration, in spirit action, and if you look at the whole world and the, the, and the people themselves as the church, when you inspire someone, you're giving them that spirit. 
You're inspiring them, give, inspiriting them. That makes them want to give. That makes them want to watch. That makes them want to follow their own authenticity. And then all of a sudden, people follow along in that same footstep, inspiring others. And next thing you know, we have a whole new economy. We have a whole new way of making money. OnlyFans is a very shallow way of making money, but it's still inspiring some people. I mean, you know, not inspiring me. I don't go on OnlyFans, even though I should make an account for myself. Yeah, I'd rather inspire people in, an, in a wholehearted way. I'd rather inspire people in a more spiritual way. Get like, fuck the system. Like, let's get over it. You know what I mean? Like, let's make everybody rich by getting rid of money altogether. But it's, 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 it sounds far-fetched only to those who just don't believe, who, who can't think outside of the box. Jock Fresco, the creator of the Venus Project, um, he once said, uh, if you don't believe that you can change the world, then you're just not going to be one of those who does. So, I believe if a mosquito can make a huge difference, 10,000 times smaller than a human, can have a huge, huge, significant change on the human body, then surely at least a human can have some sort of change on the entire world. And I'm sure they can. I'm sure I can. I'm sure you can. That's why I do what I do, man. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. There's something, something that's pulling you. Maybe you want to let go of this system too. Maybe deep down inside, you're not happy with the way things are, with how mundane and repetitive and monotonous your life has become. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of don't want to live out of a tent because it's basically like living out of a house. I mean, sure, I get the luxury of being out here in this beautiful place. Sure, I may not have the luxury of a toilet. <laughs> I mean, I have the luxury of these, in what you call insects, but really they're like nature's machines, you know what I mean? It breaks down, it's very intelligent, it breaks down that material to bring it back into the earth. And animals might even, other animals might feed off of it. Like, I have the most technical toilet. I, I just can't imagine like maybe like, you know, five of us like shitting in one area, like that's a little much. So, you know, uh, thank God for toilets. But I mean, you know, let's make magic happen. Let's do something different in the world. End the money machine by becoming the money machine. And one, one way that you can do that is by going online, creating content, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, inspiring people by doing the things that you love. And this is for the people who are creatives, the people who, it's not may not be for everybody. It's not for everybody. Some people are destined to whatever it is they want to do, you know? If they, they're kind of bred to believe that they need a scared shitless to go to college, to make it in the world, you know? I'll go work at Starbucks or whatever Target, you know, until I can make it, you know, out of college and then hopefully get a job which by the time they get out of college, then the whole system's changed. You got AI coming in, like it's, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's such a weird back way of going about it. And then you're in debt because of college. Like, it's, so it's just, just, just a bunch of, you know, running in circles. Uh, so that's why I'm on this mission. I just can't get over not wanting to work for the man. I don't want to do it. I just can't do it. I remember the first time I got a job at Target when I was, <laughs> when I, when I was like maybe 18, 19, I had gotten a DUI. It was like dropped down to a wet and reckless, you know, they were easy on me. I had to take some classes, but I had to pay for them. And, uh, I had to make some money to pay for them because my parents were going to pay for them. And, you know, it's a good thing they didn't because, you know, that taught me like some effort in working and working towards something. But I remember when I put on when I started my first day, I was excited for the interview and you know, it was cool getting the interview. You know what I mean? Who doesn't like that feeling of like, you know, oh, I got an interview, I got accomplished, I got seen, you know what I mean? Like, you know, who doesn't like that feeling? But then the first day of starting work officially, I put on that red shirt 
and those khaki pants at the time they were khaki pants I think might have been jeans but let's just call them khakis and I put on the red shirt and khakis and I remember like looking at myself in the mirror as, and crying you know like fuck I, you know, like I'm really gonna do this like this sucks like I feel like I'm selling my soul away I was 18, 19 I didn't even have the activist mentality well, I started to actually I did thanks to Zeitgeist but I, I, I didn't see as much as I do today when it comes to the world and everything you know I just remember just crying feeling so down and dep feeling depressed on my way my mom was driving me to work for the first time you know target I'm like oh she was like so happy for me you know what i mean i'm so happy for you thank you mom thank you but fuck i was so but i was so depressed and you know eventually i make the best of it you know what i mean try to make friends and stuff but you can't you can't be too friendly you can't be you can't be too talkative you got to do work and you know of course it makes sense but then you feel like a robot after a while like damn do we really have to zone like this like Okay, everything, all this stuff has to come up right. Why can't they have a machine that just pushes everything? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, as as the products fall off the shelf, just like there's like a trigger that triggers the machine to like push everything forward. Why can't they have that? Why do they have to have humans do, the, do that? It's just so dumb. It's like a pointless job. You know what I mean? I can see the Zen practice of doing something pointless. You know what I mean? Like, because that's the point. But at the same time, when you're doing it over and over again to make a living, I feel like I'm worth more than that. I'm worth so much more than that. And I know it deep down inside myself, finding it and unraveling all of the beliefs that I didn't, that I wasn't worth that. That's a bitch. That's a mission. That's a mission in itself. Realizing, re-realizing your worth. But from a child, you knew your worth. You just kind of, kind of got it. He just kind of got it kicked out of you. Uh, now you're like, well, what the fuck do I do? You knew all along. You just forgot. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'll explain more about everything else in other videos. Um, I'll see you later. I'm about to go to Starbucks and have some more tea. Late.